Hey guys, in today's video we're taking a look at the new version 10.4 of Final Cut Pro and why I believe that for once this software finally feels like a complete, fully fledged NLE out of the box. Just before we get into it, I have to make a short public service announcement. Now I know a lot of you that follow this channel would have noticed that new intro at the beginning of this video. I've recently refreshed channel 8 a little, and to be honest it's not really a version 1.0 to 2.0 type of upgrade, but more like a version 1.5 to 1.6. From this point onwards I have rebranded the channel and my business with this new logo. Before we had 8's photography, of which if we're being completely honest was quite awkward, I feel like I had to explain that logo every single time to clients. With the new logo, I decided to keep it simple and straight to the point. Got that 8 and put it on its side and formed Infinity Photography. In a way, that Infinity will always be an 8 on its side. So you diehard fans, if there are any, can still feel free to call this 8's Photography. Learn, inspire, shoot is our new slogan and it's very self-explanatory. I want Channel 8 to be a place where we can all learn new things in digital imagery, get inspired to create great content whether it be still or motion picture, and finally, a place where we are all encouraged to just get out there and start shooting. I have also opened a new website recently where I'll be posting all of my client work and bookings can be made. I'll leave a link in the description below. Besides just photography, I have also started work as a freelance director under the name Director8, and I'll be posting all of my work in the Director8 Projects playlist on this channel. So make sure you check out my work and drop a like or a comment. All right, so that is the end of the public service announcement. Channel 8 is now officially upgraded and ready to go in 2018. Final Cut Pro is a non-linear editor brought to us by the engineers at Apple many years ago for Mac users. Unlike its competitors, the idea behind it was that wherever software is written specifically for a set of components, it can be highly optimized to perform a lot better than otherwise. And Apple really succeeded there because Final Cut always seemed to be a lot more fluid and responsive in comparison to its competitors like Adobe Premiere. And if we start talking about render times, FCP 10 completely blew the competition out of the water. When version 10 of Final Cut was released, I always felt like it was incomplete. It was very bare bones and simple, which some people do appreciate, however it almost feels a little too simple for heavy professional use. Adobe Premiere always had Lumetri Color, and Final Cut had this really basic color board that was just straight up terrible. Some colorists will argue that it is still pretty effective, however it just wasn't as good as Lumetri. And the thing is, you expect software of this caliber to have some complete coloring tools. Throughout the entire time I've used Final Cut, I've had to switch between different coloring plugins like Magic Bullet's Colorista or Color Finale. It felt cumbersome and more so these plugins bogged down Final Cut sometimes to the point where it wasn't even usable. Enter Final Cut Pro version 10.4. Now I know this mini review is quite late for software that was released about a month ago, so I'll keep it as snappy as possible. We're only going to be taking a look at five of the major upgrades and improvements in this video. So first up, we now have support for 360 degree VR content straight out of the box. You can import and edit equirectangular video. You can even pull up a 360 degree view while you edit in real time to kind of get a hands-on view of your changes. There are a whole lot of other 360 VR features like support for monoscopic and stereoscopic 360 that I'll just list. Let's move on to what I believe is the single most significant improvement in this version of Final Cut, which is the color grading features. We have an entirely new set of color correcting tools. You can still balance your colors automatically just like before, however now you can use an eyedropper to select a true white point in the frame to manually correct white balance. In the new color inspector, you'll notice that by default, the old color board will open up. However, if you click on this little drop down arrow, you have a lot more options like color wheels, color curves, as well as hue and saturation curves. We finally get a proper color temperature scale in the color wheel menu that is in Kelvin, so you can make precise adjustments. You even get LUT support now, so in essence, all your color grading can be done natively within Final Cut without ever using a plugin. Here are some of the other coloring features in version 10.4. Third, we have HDR support. You can import, edit, and export video in Rec 2020 HLG or Rec 2020 PQ. You can even naturally tone map HDR footage to standard dynamic range without your image looking weird or funny with a simple effect. 
HDR is a pretty big deal considering that now a lot of smartphones are HDR ready, as well as televisions. So that transition to editing and delivering HDR content can become very valuable this year. Fourth, we have support for high efficiency video coding or HEVC and high efficiency image format. With resolution and image quality always improving, the bit rates of videos are getting bigger and bigger. The file sizes of a lot of this content are huge. HEVC can become very important from now onwards because storage is a significant factor of video production. Why spend tons of money on hard drives and storage when you don't have to? And finally, the optical flow in Final Cut has been immensely improved. The feature now works with Apple's Metal 2 framework, which is significantly faster than its predecessor. I believe this is an important improvement because I've had situations where I was editing a long project and needed to apply some optical flow analysis to many different shots in the timeline. The old Final Cut took ages analyzing the data and Final Cut would slow down significantly. And of course time is money these days and unfortunately I just wasn't willing to be waiting up to 20 minutes for a small effect like optical flow to render out. So this is a very welcome new feature in my eyes. So there you have it folks, those are the top 5 new Final Cut features that I believe are noteworthy. The most significant one for me of course has to be the advanced color grading tools. I finally feel like Final Cut is a complete non-linear editor. By complete, I mean an editor where you can do all your cuts and effects as well as do some serious color grading natively, which is what I believe we've always wanted as Final Cut loyalists. It's good to see that Apple is actually listening to the users and making useful improvements. Thanks for watching and I hope that this video has been useful to you. Please leave a like or a comment and don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as turn on notifications for more videos like this. Catch you folks in the next one.